Alright, so this video is going to be a bit different than the other ones I've put out, since I don't technically have a formal argument that I'm putting forward or refuting. I'm going to talk about my deconversion from being a fundamentalist Christian to being an atheist. And I really want to do this because I think it's something that all of us who've deconverted want to get out there for other people who might be going through the same thing. And hopefully it's also something that's useful for lifelong atheists to understand where the faithful are going to come from. I'm going to give a brief overview of what my religious background was growing up. Um, there's a much longer and detailed post about this on my blog that I'm going to link to in the description box. The long and short of it is, I was born a Catholic, and then my family uh, converted to being fundamentalist Christian, specifically Baptist, when I was about like nine years old. I was always in Catholic school, or eventually evangelical Christian school, up and through high school. Um, I pretty much did the Awana, where you get candy for memorizing Bible verses, youth group, youth retreats, whole nine yards. I had um, young earth creationist science classes, I had Sunday school, church service, Bible class, Bible tests, and then weekly chapel at school. Point is, I knew my theology about as well as you could expect anybody who's a Christian who's also not gone to seminary to understand theology. In fact, I'd like, I could put myself up against most Christians on a test of theological knowledge, and I think I'd come out ahead. Now, I don't want to say all this is some kind of a condemnation on my parents. They actually sacrificed quite a bit to send me to Christian schools. Uh, they were almost always a better option than the public schools, and even when they weren't, I was begging them to let me go. Um, so they sacrificed a bit to do that for us, and I have no right to complain about my childhood. It was very good. Um, so this isn't anything on them. So pretty much I went to college and I went to a non-Christian school for college because engineering programs at Christian colleges generally aren't all that good. Um, and you think this is where a Christian kid goes and loses his faith. It's not actually. Um, I still believed even though I quote unquote backslid, I started having sex, um, largely because hormones are more powerful than Jesus. And there was a schism in the church I was in, and my parents went through a divorce at the time, so things happened. I wasn't going to church, but I still believed. Now, as a matter of fact, I actually had a renewal of my faith towards the end of my college experience. So, when I got out of college, I took my girlfriend, who is now my wife, and I converted her to being an evangelical Christian. We went looking for church, we stopped having sex, um, and we got married. And we settled into a very conservative evangelical Presbyterian church, although I have to admit by this point I was no longer a young earth creationist. I actually had a Muslim professor explain how evolution and the Big Bang was still compatible with theism in general. Um, and the church we had was very conservative, but they were open-minded enough to allow that kind of a view in. Um, so I got really involved in the church. I was their sound guy for seven years. I was a trustee. I did small group Bible studies. I worked in various ministries. And generally, everything was really good. Um, but there was one leftover problem. My circle of friends expanded as a result of my wife and college. You see, back before college, I didn't know anybody who wasn't my specific brand of Christian, let alone somebody who wasn't a Christian at all. And uh, through the course of meeting somebody and working with them at a GameStop while I was in school, and they turned out to be friends with my wife, uh, we were good friends, and eventually they came out as gay. And I freaked, and my wife was like, you're an asshole, you're not supposed to be freaking out about this. And she pointed out that I had no problems with this person before he was gay, and I really have no good reason to be mean, you know, just stop associating with him. So, eventually, um, after my wife and I got married... Um, pretty much our friend found a partner. And us being geeks, we hung out more with our geek friends than we did church friends. And uh, they were hanging out with us all the time. And we became very, very, very good friends. And my church at the time, the way to deal with this was that you were supposed to be a light for Jesus. You were supposed to live and be good and your life would exemplify the values of Christianity, and that would hopefully convert your friends, even if they were gay. And something to know about um, growing up, being gay was pretty much the worst thing ever. They were like the most out there, demonstrably wrong thing ever. Um, so my wife actually did quite a bit of work making me not as bigoted towards gays, and uh, so did my friends. They put up with a lot of shit. Um, I learned to stop using the word gay as an insult. You stop using the word faggot. 
because that made people I cared about uncomfortable. So, I stopped being a bigot. Awesome sauce. But then, kind of a problem happened. Um, I realized how much I was, and still am, in love with my wife. I know... I knew what love was. And through my uh, friends, let's call them Jason and Tom, that they, after about what, eight years knowing these guys, they had the same kind of loving, committed relationship my wife and I did. They went through the same kind of couple things. Um, th- we were just so alike, and I knew what love was, and it was clear as day that they had it. And I could not call that wrong. There is no way you can tell me that that love is wrong. That is the most wonderful thing that I think you could probably experience, is that kind of a love. And to call that wrong, it just does not compute for me at all. And that's in direct contradiction with the Bible. And it was about this time that I was, um, you know, going on the internet and actually debating politics, and eventually I came across some criticism of religion. And normally you kind of blow all that off, but you can't do that once you start seeing problems with the Bible. And I started finding lots of problems with the Bible. And the biggest problem I found was that now that I actually had friends that I cared about that this applied to, um, my friends who were clearly in love and were wrong for their love because of what the Bible says were going to hell. Eternal conscious torture. And that shook me quite a freaking bit. So all of this criticism of religion stuff started to stick pretty well. And what probably didn't help the church's case um, in, in my scenario was that a lot of this came to a head for me while I had taken a temporary work assignment to go work in another country for six months. And um, during that, that time, I was working so many hours that um, I had my wife with me, but we ended up not going to church during that time just because the schedule was insane. And I did a lot of reading at that time, and I still did. I kept a lot of it to myself, and I started investigating arguments against theism. And I finally broke through and was able to ask myself a question that I realized I had never asked in the 20 plus years I was a Christian. Why do I believe in a God? I had no answer for this. Now, one of the things I realized when I asked myself this question was that I was taught this Jesus stuff since I was an infant. In fact, I was taught it by the same people who taught me more concrete things. You know, ice was frozen water, 2 plus 2 equals 4, and Jesus Christ is the Son of God who died for my sins. Ultimately, every argument I found for Christianity fell back on, well, you have to have faith, or if it was a problem with Christianity, it was God, we can't know why God does things. He's so far beyond us. And really, that's not a satisfying answer. Um, so I read the arguments, the counter-arguments, the counter-counter-counter-arguments, and eventually when I came back home and started talking to my pastor and all my church friends about all of these doubts that I was having... Um, they couldn't really get past the first set of counter-arguments, and then eventually fell down on the faith thing. And the argument that did it for me was the argument from hell. Because if you believe in Christian theology, you believe that the only thing that existed eternally is God. And eventually, God had to decide to create the universe. And God knew that, um, because of his perfect justice, if he gave man free will, which apparently he really needed to go do, um, that he was going to have to create a hell. And he's faced with a choice at this point. Either he's going to create the universe and create a hell. And according to Matthew seven thirteen through 14, uh, explicitly tells us that the majority of mankind will be condemned to hell um, with only a few finding salvation. He has to make a choice. He's either going to create or not to create. And, well, for the vast majority of creation, it's better off not being created if you're going to be condemned to eternal conscious torture. So why would you create? God's a perfect being, and we believe that he was before the universe, then he exists in a triune Godhead of mutual fulfilling love in the most perfect state possible. He is perfection, according to Christian theology. So he had to create for creation's benefit, not for his own or for any need or want on his end. But most of creation is better off not being created. Hell, even if it was a small amount of creation that wasn't better, was better off not being created, The only moral choice there is to not create. And that was pretty much the argument that made me lose my faith. I eventually one day broke down and started crying. I realized I no longer believe this crap. And that was a problem because I converted my wife, the most important person in my life at the time, um, 
to being this Christian. My entire family was Christian. I realized I'm not seeing my dead relatives ever again. Um, I might get disowned. What is this going to do to my marriage? Um, why have I lied, been lied to my whole life? Why have I converted people to this terrible religion? And yeah, it hurt, but it was also freeing at the same time. Um, now, unfortunately, while it was freeing, that only lasted a little bit and the fear took over. And I told my wife and she was very upset and she still believed she wasn't nearly as conservative. I was, she didn't necessarily see all the problems I did. She didn't have the indoctrination that I had had. Um, so when I had showed her things in the Bible, I said, no, hell has to exist. No, homosexuality is wrong. All these sorts of things. Um, it shook her, but she still believed in a God and she still was Christian. So I threw myself into apologetics, hardcore, for two years, trying to make myself go back and believe this shit again so my life could go back to normal. I talked to pastors, I talked to friends, I did everything you could. I read William Lane Craig, C.S. Lewis, Tim Keller, even uh, more liberal theology stuff by like Kenton Sparks. I did debate after debate online, reading every possible argument. I tried to go back. I really did. And it didn't work. There was no argument. You could not make me believe that shit again. And fortunately for me, everything worked out. Um, my wife eventually... Um, when we kind of had stopped talking about it for a while, uh, she came around one day and told me that she didn't believe anymore, that she wasn't a Christian. Um, she's kind of an agnostic, but that's good enough for me. We worked out what we agreed on and didn't agree on and what we wanted to do with any kids that we had. And, um, fortunately, I can't tell you how happy I am, but we finally were able to have kids, um, after we, uh, deconverted. And that is pretty much the best thing ever. Um... We did have to tell the extended family, um, now that a kid was involved, that we weren't Christians, which has caused some problems, but it wasn't uh, disowning like I thought it was. It's been a little rough, but mostly good. We've been okay. Um, and, yeah, so as a result of all this, I found out, hey, guess what? I kind of like philosophy, and having read all the apologetics and seen the bullshit that it is, I want to help other people who might be going through what I go through, or went through, and... I want to let you know, you can deconvert, you can leave. Life is so much better when you're not suffering cognitive dissonance or thinking that the vast majority of people that you know and care about, or people who exist, period, are going to be suffering eternal conscious torture. Um, now, there's better reasons than that to leave Christianity, but we'll get to that in future videos. Pretty much, I wanted to get this out there and let people know why I left and why I'm doing what I'm doing. So, if you sat through all this, thanks for watching.